Hi and uh, welcome to the start of this series, Blended Beginnings. Um, it's going to be a pretty easy um, video this one. We're just going to go over the main viewport here um, and what you can expect to find here, what the different functions are, just find our way around it really. Um, so when you start the scene, you will actually have this here. This is one of my own models. Um, you'll actually have a cube here in the middle, um, just in case anybody's thrown by that. So I'm going to start with uh, these tabs at the top here. So if you have a look at these areas down here, um, sorry, I'll just turn that off. It's not worked how I thought it would do. So if you look at the tabs at the top here, we've got uh, layout, modeling, sculpting, UV editing, and a whole bunch of things. These are known as workspaces. And in each workspace, you can do a different set of functions. Layout is where you'll have your scene and all your meshes, including this one that I've imported. Uh, modeling, where you can actually use tools to model the meshes and make edits to it. Uh, sculpting, where you can, uh, again, use uh, tools to actually um, create little, you know, finer details, those kind of things uh, with a subdivided mesh. UV editing, which is where you unwrap your model and you actually uh, create a UV map in this space here, which you then add, you know, either texture inside Blender or you take something like Substance Painter, if that's indeed where you want to texture your asset from. And then there's uh, Texture Paint as well, which I don't really know too much about my, myself. Um, so I'm going to move past that one. The shading as well, where you can uh, build, build a shader network here at the bottom um, to create something to show in Blender. And then there's also animation, uh, rendering, if you want to actually capture your results. It's also got compositing. It's got something new called geometry nodes, uh, something that I've, uh, I've only just started to look into. So, But it's probably something I'll do a video about in the future. Um, now, although I've used Blender a little bit, um, I've not really used half these actual workspaces. Uh, I'm going to be focusing on the first few. Uh, we'll probably come over to shading and rendering later in the series as well. Uh, but it's an absolutely massive package. There's tons of things that you can do with it. But that is where you can find the workspaces. The next thing to consider is what's on the top of the bars here. So first of all, we have this icon here. And now this icon, can also be found over here and it can be found over here as well in the outliner and the properties window. I'm going to talk about the outliner and the properties window in a later video. For now, let's just stick with the main 3D viewport. This shows you what view you have in the window at the moment. Now I'm on editor view so I can see my object. I can see uh, the, the graph here or the grid rather. I can see the axes. I can see the 3D cursor. I click on this, there's a whole, whoops, there's a whole range of views that I can choose. Um, for example, we already have the outliner there, but I could have it here if I wanted. I could have the properties window here if I wanted. If I go, for example, to UV editor, it now shows me the view for where my UVs would actually be inside this window. I'm gonna go back to the 3D viewport for now. But you can change what view you have here. Uh, you know, many of these views and editors relate to the workspaces at the top here. Next, we've got this, which is uh, what mode you're in. Uh, one thing that's important to know about Blender is that the different modes determine what you can do with objects and how you can manipulate them. At the moment, I am in object mode, which is where you always start. And when you're in object mode, that means you can move, translate, rotate objects um, at your will. Uh, you can you know, duplicate them, you can scale them up or down, uh, but you can't fundamentally change them. It's basically for scene assembly or scene development. So for example, uh, I'll just select everything at the moment. If I wanted to move this um, maybe to the right or something, I could actually do that. You know, if I wanted to put it over there, if I wanted to rotate it because I was going to bring something round, then I could do something like that. Okay. But that's about all I can really do in object mode. It's basically for selecting full objects in the scene and for doing your scene assembly. Now, one of the things, when you select an object, you can then have more options than just object mode. So we've got edit mode, 
and edit mode is where you can actually go into the model and actually start making changes. You can start adding details or you can move edges around um, and that kind of thing. The next one is sculpt mode and sculpt mode basically allows you to, uh, well, basically sculpt further details onto your mesh. There's a whole range of brushes here. People normally only use about four or five um, to create uh, finer details. This looks pretty awful here, but it was uh, a poly, a poly only model. The high poly has lots of, um, has lots of support edges inside of it. It's not something that I sculpted, uh, but you know, th this is more for organic really. You can do hard surface with it, but you, you know, if you're like um, sculpting a tree or something like that, that's where these tools come in very handy. And they're especially important for character character creation as well. Uh, there's also vertex paint, weight paint, and texture paint as well. Uh, they're not things that I've used very much of, but uh, weight paint is very good for rigging uh, and skinning characters. And you want to determine how much the um, how much the skin wants to change um, and deform and that kind of thing when you're when you're moving a character around. That's what that that's for. Okay, let's go back to object mode. And then the next is we've got this menu here, um, which actually changes depending on the mode that you're in. Okay, so it's a context sensitive menu, which basically allows you to add objects, make changes to your mesh, such as duplicate it, you can mirror it, you can transform or move it. Um, and like I say, whichever mode you're in, those are actually going to change. So here, for example, in sculpt mode, we have a, a you know, a menu for masks and what we may want to do with those masks, if we want to smooth them or if we want to grow it, um, which you don't have available in other modes. This section in the middle um, is quite important for your pivot points and snapping and things like that. So at the moment, this, as you can see here, we have an object in the scene. Uh, we have like a science fiction war. And at the moment, this orient this transformation orientation is set to global. Now, there's lots of different modes you can have, but the main ones are global or local. Uh, when something is set to global, what it means is however you rotate, translate, or scale that object will be in relation to the world itself. So for example, green, uh, the y-axis will always be this way. Uh, the z-axis will always be up or down and things like that okay now if I change this to local which I've done here um, you're gonna know some you're gonna notice something a little bit different so let me choose these screens here I'm just gonna rotate them a little bit okay just like that now if you look at that the direction of this has actually changed so if I go back to the move tool you notice that is now local to where these screens are. The Y axis is running alongside the screens. The um, X axis is at 90 degrees. Um, Z is obviously the same. But the point is, is that this axis of movement now is local to the actual object itself, okay? Whereas if I change this back to global, it switches back to the world orientation. So global is world orientation, local is object orientation, okay? okay? There are other options in here as well, such as you can have them based around the normal, the normal direction or you, or gimbal, um, but uh, you can also have it based on the view as well. So for example, if I select view and then I select these objects, no matter where I am, it's always going to be orientated towards the view, which can be useful for certain situations if you want to place an object in a very particular position and you get the viewport camera exactly where you want it to be. Okay. But generally, I, I work mainly in global and local. Okay, this one is around origin points um, and where pivot points are based. Uh, there's a few different options here, but the main ones to understand are 3D cursor, which is this circle here. Uh, the 3D cursor is very useful for deciding where you want objects to spawn um, or if you want to place something in a particular particular place. So for example, let's say I want an object to appear, um, let's say on the wall here, I could take the 
I could take the um, 3D cursor and I could place it there just on that edge. And maybe I'd want to place like a lock or something just on that edge there. If I actually add an object there now, I'm just going to add a small, well, it's going to be huge, but let's add the cube. You notice there, basically, it's just, well, I've actually scaled it the wrong way now, but um, as you can see there, it basically placed it where the 3D cursor was, okay? And that's where the 3D cursor could be very handy. If you wanted to, let's say, add a add an object here, maybe you had like a small little screen or something that was going to appear in the central part there, you could add the 3D cursor in that position, you could add a mesh or add an object, or maybe you could add some particle effects, like maybe some sparks or something, and they're going to come out where that 3D cursor is. So that's where that is useful. Okay, I'm just going to reset the... Uh, the cursor, which is something I will tell you about very shortly. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is snapping. And I've got it turned on here, but th this is the button used to turn snapping on and off. So it was snapping turned off. Use these screens again. If I move them out like that, they just move freely by themselves. Okay. If I turn snapping on, have it to increment you'll notice it actually moves with the grid now, okay? Now there's different things you can snap to. I did choose increments there, which basically means it will snap in increments based on the grid, but you can also snap it to others. Uh, vertex is particularly handy. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another one. Choose vertex first, and then I'm gonna add a mesh. I'm just gonna add a simple cube, actually. Um, so what's useful for this when the snapping is on is if I'm going to move this object, let's say around here, you notice it's snapping at the moment around where this yellow circle is. So let's say I want, for whatever reasons, I want like a step at the bottom perhaps here. Okay, I just wanna move it up a little bit. And let's say I'm, I'm gonna model something in where there's like some little step there at the, at the moment. <clears throat> what I what I may decide is I may think, okay, well, I want the edge of this step to be in line with, you know, the edge here on the corner, just on, if I annotate here, just around here, okay? So let's say that's where I, I want it to be. What I can do is I can move the object, and then what I can do is I can have it snap to where the edge is there and it's a little bit difficult to see there so i'm going to go into orthographic view which will show it a little bit better okay but as you can probably see there they're actually level okay but that's very handy if you want to snap objects to to particular edges or a vertex somewhere you want to line it up with something. It, it doesn't look great in this example because you, you wouldn't really be doing that. You might just eyeball it, but certainly if you're trying to line up panels and that kind of thing, you may have one panel above another and you may use vertex snap to make sure that they are, they are in line. So that's quite handy. You can do the same thing with edge. Uh, that's simply all it is. You're, just, you're basically doing exactly the same thing. You're snapping it to an edge somewhere on the object if you're wondering where the edges are here and what it's snapping to, it's basically just that 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 little that little yellow circle that you're seeing there where it actually snaps. And I can put this in edit mode at the moment just to oh, actually it's the wrong object. Let's go to this object. If I go to edit mode there, you can see the lines where some of the geometry is, which is actually very simple and not exactly the cleanest, actually, but very, very, very simple uh, geometry on the subject. It's quite an old model list that I'm using for this tutorial. You can also do things like edge center and edge perpendicular as well. I don't personally use those, to be honest with you. Face I do use sometimes, uh, but I really do increment vertex and sometimes edge. Uh, you have other options as well. You know, you can choose, uh, you know, snap to the closest vertex, the center uh, of an edge, a medium point. Um, you can decide what it's going to rotate as well. So in terms of snaps, I only had it affecting move. 
let's say I wanted to affect it with rotate as well. I've just chosen that now, so I choose rotate onwards. Okay, I select this object and I rotate it. If I help if I put it back to increment. You notice it's actually happening in small little increments now. I'm not actually sure how many degrees it's moving, but that gives you that gives you an idea of how that works. Okay, for the next function here we have something that's called proportional editing. And what this allows you to do is actually have an effect on your mesh that has a lessening effect over or an effect over a wider area of your model where it's very pronounced at one point but that levels off in other parts of your mesh now what i've done is i've just stopped the video temporarily to create a, create another cube subdivide this i'll go through what i did at a later stage but i've done that so that i have enough geometry to showcase what this function does okay so I am going to drop into edit mode for a second and then what we can do is let's just select a bunch of faces here okay i'm going to turn on proportional editing okay now i'll talk about these in a moment watch what happens when i pull this up help this works better if you turn snaps off but you see that the areas where i've chosen are unaffected they sim well they are affected in that they translate in the direction that I'm moving them but the the vertices around them are also influenced by the position and the direction and what happens to these actual vertices and as you go further away from the affected um, polygons or faces or vertices it becomes less and then less and less pronounced there's a fall off with it okay um, and it, that's what this is called, the proportional falloff. You can see them here, the different types of falloffs that you have. So I've chosen smooth, okay? If I undo that, and let's just say I choose, I don't know, let's, let's just say those ones. I could choose something like sphere, and when I pull that up, it has a more spherical effect if you wanted like some kind of dome or something. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next uh, couple of aspects which are around here on the, the toolbar. There's more that I could say about proportional editing, but it's really its own thing, which to go deeper with would really need its own video. So, um, so I'm just going to quickly go through these icons because you'll be using these a fair bit. So when, once you start building out your scene and you have a lot of objects in it, um, you may want to sort them, you know, by the type of object they are. That's what this icon allows you to do. So, as you can see, all types of objects are visible with this. And I can turn certain ones on and off, such as mesh. And you see that hides every mesh in the world. Okay. I press that back on. They turn back on. Now, I've only really got meshes, cameras, and lights. But if I just scroll out a bit, you can see here, this is actually the symbol for a camera in the world and that is actually a light um, I'm not sure what type of light is I think it's a point light um, but uh, you know if I go up here and I turn off uh, lights for example and cameras they disappear but the mesh remains okay so that's what that is um, this is just to show gizmo um, you know and what you want it to do uh, you know whether you want it to just show each individual one such as move rotate or scale or if you want it to show all of them at once basically uh, whether you want it to be global local or gimbal or anything like that okay i just tend to leave it on default i don't really tend to change any of this okay this next option is to show overlays on gizmos okay so for example do we want the floor guides on and off so that's what this is these floor guides basically show us the grid and the size of everything i personally find it quite useful so do most people most people but as an example you could turn that off um we've only got the x and y axes available here but you could turn on z as well as you can see that appear as you can see that appears there so the origin point for objects which is the little orange circle here you can turn those on and off there's a whole variety of things that you can have there i again i tend to keep this 
uh, the way it is. I do actually more often than not turn, oops, I more often than not do turn the Z axes on because I do find it useful. But that's what that would be. Or well, you can turn everything off just by clicking that button. Okay. This next one is just toggle X-ray. Simple but very useful. If I select this object here, let's say I have to model something on the back, or I want to see where vertices are, I want to see where it, it, it's it's uh, where everything's situated. I can just turn that on, and then I can actually see through the objects, as you can see here. If I go into edit mode, that's quite useful because then I can start to see where. Well, I've got a lot of uh, a lot of loop cuts in here, but I can see where faces are. I can see where vertices are in the background. Let's say if I want to select, I needed to select that one for example for some reason and I needed to move it across because it was affecting something then I could do that okay go back to object mode come out of it again and then this is actually just the viewport shading types okay so this is wireframe which again useful just to see how your objects are built and just see how everything's coming together um, you have flat shaded here um, but then there's also viewport shading as well, um, and there's also um, uh, one that displays it in uh, is the rendered view, which I don't really tend to use very much. I tend to just use the normal one. Okay, but what you can do here by clicking this button is you can choose what type of lighting you want. Now, I don't really ever use flat, and Studio's fine. I personally tend to some I, sometimes I move things to matcap because I I just prefer a little bit. Uh, but also you can choose what kind of rendering you want as well. Now the clay one can be very handy um, when you're modeling certain objects I find. Um, I find it shows up details quite well. Um, also I think the, the studio lighting setup is useful as well. But you can choose all sorts of viewport rendering <coughs> you know, shader types basically. Um, and you can affect the object. Um, you can affect the material. It's kind of up to you, uh, basically. Um, Backface color can be turned off. You can have X-ray on. You can increase or decrease the strength of it, basically. Um, I tend to have it about 75 if I am using it. Okay. I'm going to turn X-ray back off. Um, now I'm going to jump back over to the left-hand side here, basically. Whichever mode you are in, you're going to have a selection of things that you can do okay so object mode has its own set edit mode has a lot more as you can see and obviously whichever object is is selected um, starts to starts to show the edges the faces and the vertices as well so you can actually edit them okay I'm just gonna stick with these two modes for now um, but essentially there's a there's a bunch of basic movements you can do here which you've seen me clicking so this is the move tool okay and then this is the, so yeah, we can move things around just like that, which, which you've seen me doing. Okay. Got rotate as well, where you can rotate based on based on uh, different axes, or you can just rotate it freehand, um, whichever you prefer. Okay. And then you've got the scale tool as well, where you can scale in one direction or scale in two directions, or you can scale completely. Okay. And then there's a gizmo as well where you can have all three in one and that's just a preference whether you want uh, you want scale rotate and move all together i personally don't like it i think it gets a little bit a little bit cluttered but it's down to personal preference but this tool is quite handy um, because it's especially useful for some of these videos because you can start annotating and pointing people towards things or there are things that you can add in add in your scene and make notes okay so annotate is a relatively new um, option that's been added to Blender, I think, in the last couple of years. But that's pretty that's pretty useful. You can annotate particular polygons, or you can annotate um, you can annotate um, you know on lines. I tend to just use annotate if I am going to use it. And of course, then there's an eraser for it as well. There's also a measurement tool here, which is very useful uh, normally when you're in particular views. Um, you know this this can be this can be quite useful if you want to take the the size of something let's say you know the size of of, of, a, of an object or you know if you're doing arch or something is where that's handy and then you can also add objects 
So cube, cone, cylinder, spheres. Okay. And so that's pretty that's pretty straightforward where you just click and drag it out with your left mouse button. Let go. And then you just raise it up and down to whatever size you want it to be. And then that will just drop an object in the world for you. Um, holding shift or rather control, is it? No, shift, control and shift it is. If you pull that in and out, it will keep everything equal in terms of the length and width, okay? When you let go of that and then you raise it, it will also snap it so that it's um, so it's snapped to a perfect sphere in, in the case of choosing a sphere. If I do that with a cube, I hold control shift, and then I click and drag, sorry, yeah, control then shift you have to press. Okay, and then I click and drag that out. Then I let go. Then I pull up, it gives me a perfect cube if I'm holding both of those. Soon I have to press shift to actually get that back and then press press the left mouse button. And I get a perfect, perfect cube. Okay. There's also a whole bunch of modes in edit mode, but I'm gonna do a different video for each individual function here because if you're new to Blender and you begin to use this, you're going to be using them a lot. Okay. Okay. Finally, what we've got on the right hand side here of the viewport are a few important things. So first of all, we have the um, the viewport manipulator here, um, or the handle, basically, where you can grab one of the handles and use that to rotate your viewport. Okay. You can grab any one of these to actually affect it. It doesn't really change too much. You just move your mouse around and it will give you that control. Okay. The other option is you can click on X to get X view, Y or Z to get front, side or top. Okay. Which is very handy in its own right. Um, these are tools for actually moving the viewport. Okay, so there's two ways that you can do this. Okay, first of all, you could use these controls here. So this one allows you to zoom in by holding it with the left mouse button, moving the mouse forwards and backwards. Okay, this allows you to pan it. Again, holding the left mouse button and just moving the mouse around. This one actually toggles to any, toggles through cameras that you have in your scene. Now, any scene that you open up in Blender has the viewport camera on which we're seeing the whole scene at the moment. And it also has a default camera, which is right here. Okay. And if you took a render, it's through this camera here that you would see everything. Okay. So if I just click this button, you see how it's framed that there. Okay. And then you can also zoom in and zoom, you know, zoom out and zoom in, which changes things like the focal length and the depth of field and POV and stuff like that as well. And this one as well, it changes between perspective and orthographic view. Okay, perspective is true 3D, where you see things in this view. But if you're going to be doing a lot of modeling, I advise you change it by clicking this button and going to orthographic, which is more of a two and a half D view, basically. But what it does allow you to, to do is if you are in, let's say, edit mode, you're able to really get in places and go right up and, and, and impact, impact detail, basically. Okay. So let's say I wanted to edit this, I could go right into some of the corners here and change some of these change some of these vertices for example let's say there was uh, I wanted to tighten up this loop or I wanted to add another bevel here I would be able to do that so so personally any modeling I do I'm gonna I do in um, I do in orthographic view okay so I'm gonna switch that back to perspective okay and then this is, uh, there's three little tabs here as well, okay, um, which are useful for things. So the first one is item. And if you're on item, then whatever, if you have no objects selected, um, it tends to just be, I'm not quite sure what it is actually. Um, I think it may be the last object that you selected. But when you select an object, the item shows you where it's located, 
its rotation, its scale, and things like that. So obviously, if I increase the scale here, you can see how that's changing, which is similar to what the scale tool over here does. Okay. Uh, same for rotation dimensions and things like that. You know, I can change all the dimensions for it and just uh, increase the size of it that way. Okay. And then you have tool, which is whatever active tool you've selected. So I've selected scale. I could select move. I could select rotate. Um, and then this would obviously show details about that tool that I'm using. And then view part, uh, viewport as well. Like I can change the focal length. You know, I can get in closer or I can go further away. Um, this just changes how the viewport camera works, basically. But this is quite an important box, okay? This is the 3D cursor one. So if you remember when we talked about placing the 3D cursor at various, various points in the world, again, let's say if I wanted to add an object up here, I wanted to add a quick sphere. Let's do that mesh. Let's choose a, do you know what? Let me choose a cylinder, okay? Now, it's much bigger than I want it to be. Okay, Okay, and I'm going to actually rotate that. But let's say I wanted, I was going to put some kind of pipe coming out there. I was able to do that because I added the 3D cursor there. So now I've added, added my object. I think, okay, great. I need to reset that 3D cursor. We can do that here by just putting zero in each of these boxes here. Okay, now a quick way to do that is just press zero tab and you'll go through them quite quickly like this, okay, and then that's all done, okay, and then it's completely reset at the center of the world, as you can see here, all right. At the bottom here is a bar which can be used for animation. If you set some cameras up, um, you could set up some keys and a spline for that camera to maybe follow around the world. Maybe you wanted to just go around the back of this object or something like that, and then zoom in on something that was there. Um, you know, you could animate a camera to do that, or you could anim or you could bring in some character animation, and you could set up what are known as keys at various points along this uh, this playback button here, and then play it back and see how it looks. Now, I'm not going to talk about that in this video. Uh, but that's just so you know what that is. Okay, so first of all, we talked about what these tabs are at the top here, and that they are the workspaces, that there's lots of things you can do in Blender, and that we're focusing on things like layout modeling, UV editing, shading, and so, so forth. But that's what these are. We talked about the options here as well, um, you know, that you can add objects or you can make manipulations to objects from these menus such as shading and showing and hiding objects. Uh, we've not gone through all the options, I know that, but that's where you can find these. We talked about the different modes that can be found here. We talked about the different view, how the viewport can be changed based on clicking this button and choosing one. We showed the UV editor, but there are others like the shader editor, for example, or the timeline um, or lots of other things. We talked about um, global and local transform orientations um, and why that's important. We talked about the 3D cursor and setting origin points. We talked about snapping and doing it through increments or vertices. We talked about proportional editing. We talked about some of the options for changing visibility for different objects. Um, we talked about simple overlays you can have in the viewport, such as the grid talked about x-ray mode and the different shading options you have for the viewport as well. Talked about the uh, viewport camera gimbal, uh, options for transforming, scaling, well not scaling but zooming in and out with the uh, with the camera view. We also talked about perspective versus um, orthographic viewpoints. We also talked about these three options here for item, tool and view. Last but not least we talked about uh, the left toolbar which is what is not is context sensitive just like this bar at the top and that's based on what type of mode you're in we went through the different options that are in object mode i think i missed out here that you can set your 3d cursor by by clicking this button and you also have different types of select boxes such as you can select through a box selecting all your objects or you can have a like a select lasso like that for example if you only want to select certain things but that's where that's that's where that's available. Um, 
I've not talked much about, you know, the 3D cursor and I've not talked much about, you know, the different sort of select box modes you have, but this is where everything can be found, including annotate and how to add objects. Okay. Uh, this is where you'll spend most of your time. Uh, it's a hell of a video. It's a lot to get your head around. I appreciate. So watch it a few times. Uh, just practice each element. Just get used to finding where all the different options are. Um, I'm going to get working on the next video and I hope to see you there. In the next one, we're going to actually be talking about the outliner here and we're also going to be talking about the properties window uh, because there's quite a lot to both of these as well. Okay, thanks very much. I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.